This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Now, we're looking in this lecture at chapter 18 of the free lecture notes, paragraph 9, uh, which the chapter is headed up when and when not to use the weighted average cost of capital for investment appraisal. Now, um, there's no calculations involved in this um, chapter, but it is important. Um, and it's only a fairly short lecture, but what I'm going to say in it uh, is terribly important in the exam. Remember, only 50% of the exam involves calculations. But to explain what I'm getting at, um, in the previous chapter, which I hope you've already been through, we worked out a weighted average cost of capital. We did two examples, but in example nine, which is a nice easy one, we calculated the cost of equity, 14.68. I'm not going to repeat the calculations. We did them all in the previous uh, lecture. Uh, we calculated the cost of debt, 6.09. And I said at the time, we're not surprised the cost of debt is lower. We'd expect it to be lower. And we then arithmetically took a weighted average. Uh, weighted by the total market values and got 12.51. And I said that that's usually um, the rate we'd use for investment appraisal, although in the exam, use the nearest percent. But think about what we're doing. I've already said uh, in the earlier lectures, uh, debt, for instance, the fact we were paying 8% coupon rate uh, was irrelevant. We need to know what return do shareholders, debt lenders, what return are they currently requiring if they were buying shares debt on the stock exchange and equity, if they're currently requiring 14.68 on the stock exchange, we're going to effectively have to give them 14.68 on any new finance we raise. But suppose I told you that this company was considering a new project which needed, let's say, 500,000. We need to raise 500,000. Here's how we currently financed equity 10.9 million, debt 3.68. We're going to raise another half million for a new project. Well, of course, I could raise it various ways. I could raise the money all from equity. I could raise the money all from debt. Or I could raise part from equity, part from debt. But what's going to happen? Now, first of all, the obvious suggestion would be, oh, you always want to borrow money in the cheapest way. True. Or debt's far cheaper than equity. They should borrow it from equity and it'll cost them 6%. But there's a problem. Because, OK, raise more money from equity and maybe we can get it at an after-tax cost of 6%. But the trouble is, raising more e uh, debt, raising more debt will increase the gearing of the company. And if the gearing of the company increases, we talked again in an earlier chapter, equity are going to want more. Because if there's more gearing, it's more risky for shareholders and they'll want more than 14.68. And there's a problem because the cost of this 500,000, okay, maybe we'll borrow from debt. Maybe the direct cost therefore will be 6%. But we'd have to take into account the extra cost of having to pay more to the existing shareholders. It's something called the marginal cost. It gets messy. You couldn't be asked to calculate in the exam. But there is problem number one. That depending how you raise the money, if it changes the gearing, it's going to change 
the cost of the borrowing. You know, raise the money all equity. Oh, 14.68, but no, because if you raise it all equity, the gearing would be reduced. There's less risk to shareholders. And it's likely to cost less. So that's one problem. The weighted average cost of capital stands to change as the gearing changes. And, you know, we want to know what the cost of this extra 500 is. The other problem is where are we investing it? You know, part of the reason Shell was 114.68, part of the reason is because of the gearing. But the other reason is because of the riskiness of the company. You know, some companies are in more risky businesses than others. You know, maybe if it's a sort of a firm of accountants, they're not risky at all. Shareholders are happy with a lower return. On the other hand, if it's, I don't know, an oil company or something, maybe it's a lot more risky. They want a higher return. And so the, that 14.68 is partly dependent on the riskiness of the business. We're raising another 500,000 to invest in a new project. Well, the return we need from that project, the return investors will want, depends how risky the project is. If it's a very risky project, they'll want a high return from that investment. If it's not a risky project, they'll be happy with a lower return. And so with those two factors, the return required from a project, from an investment, depends on Firstly, how the money is raised, finance raised, and specifically I mean the effect on the gearing. You see yourself, if we change the gearing, if there's more debt or more equity, the weighting changes, and if the weighting changes, that changes the weighted average. But more importantly, if we change the gearing, you have more uh, finance at a high cost or a low cost, and the um, return to uh, uh, shareholders will change, the weighted average would be affected. The other thing it depends on is the riskiness of the new project. Now, two things follow on from that. Firstly, it's only valid to appraise at the weighted average, therefore, Provided two things. Explain and think about each carefully. Don't just learn a, a rule. Firstly, that the level of gearing remains unchanged. Think about that. We'll look back at this example. At the moment, our gearing is 10.9 equity, 3.68 debt, whatever proportions those are. I don't know, 5%, 1.95%, or whatever. If we raise the new money and keep to the same level of gearing, if you raise it in the same ratio, then, if the ratio is the same, the weighting stays the same. And if the level of gearing remains the same, shareholders will still be happy with 14.68. It's only if we change the gearing that their required return would change. 
And so using the weighted average cost of capital to appraise assumes that we're keeping the gearing of the company the same. And don't worry, in the exam, I've already said, we always appraise the weighted average cost of capital, but it's assuming always that we're raising the money, part equity, part debt, that we're keeping the level of gearing in the company the same. The other problem I said was the riskiness of the new investment. If the new investment is uh, very risky, we want a high return. If it's not very risky, we'll accept a low return. Well, again, we, when we appraise at the weighted average cost of capital, we assume that the new investment has the same level of risk as the company. That we're not investing in an investment that's a lot more risky or a lot less risky. And of course, whatever the current level of risk of the business is, shareholders happy with 14.68. If the new investment has the same level of risk, then of course, for that bit of it, they'll still be happy presumably with 14.68. Now in the exam, I've kept saying, we do appraise at the weighted average, but be clear that we are making those two big assumptions, that the level of gearing stays the same, and that the new investment is the same risk as the company. Now I does beg the question, what happens if the level of gearing changes? What happens if the investment does have a different risk? Well, in later exams, in paper P4, you're expected to deal with both of those in full with numbers. In paper F9, there's very little by way of calculations other than what we've done. But there are two theories you're expected to be aware of, and I'll deal with them in the next two chapters. Uh, but one, as regards the level of gearing, uh, two gentlemen, Mr. Medigani and Mr. Miller, did a lot of work on that. And although they did come up with four million things, you're not expected to do any numbers, but you are expected to be aware of their theories. As far as the investment having a different level of risk as the company, well, there's theory there called capital asset pricing model, uh, where there are a few numbers, but I think you'll find them relatively straightforward. However, I'll deal with both of those in the following, in the next two chapters. But do make sure you understand what I've said there. That whenever we appraise a weighted average, we're assuming the level of gearing stays the same and that the new investment has the same level of risk as the company. Good.